Welcome to the ultimate Void Assassin build in New World. Now, if you're looking for a light, fun, fast, aggressive build that utilizes the Great X and the Void Gauntlet, then this video is for you. Before jumping in, I do want to call out and just thank all of you that have recently subscribed to my channel. Currently, I'm looking at about 8% of my viewers actually subscribing and liking the content. So if this video is helpful for you, please consider subscribing. It just tells me it's actually worth creating this type of content. Okay, with that out of the way, let's jump right in. Just to make things crystal clear, this is a light assassin build. What that means is that you're going to be using this build to target light dex players or healers and just targeting them hard, dishing off fast damage, going in for the kill, and then getting out of the situation. You can make this work with the Void Blade and Maelstrom, or what I personally think is more fun, Void Blade and Execute. So in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down the specifics on how this build works with Void Blade and Execute to get some fun, fast kills. First things first, let's talk attributes. Now, personally, I'm a huge fan of this breakout in regards to your different types of attributes, but you do have some flexibility on what you want to do. I run 25 dexterity, primarily to get that 5% critical hit chance. That helps me land critical hits with my execute and great X abilities when I am on the chase. When it comes to intelligence, I am maxing out at 350 and picking up all of these different perks just because I am utilizing the Abyss and a Void Gauntlet, which both scale directly off of Intelligence and really just helps me dish off maximum DPS. Next up, I am picking up 25 Focus. This does help a little bit in regards to overall damage output with my Void Gauntlet, but it also gives me a 5% ability cooldown reduction, which allows me to cycle through my abilities much faster. Lastly, I dump everything in Constitution. I am running light with this build, so it does help a little bit to have some health, but again, I'm really just focused on dishing off as much damage as possible, as quickly as possible, which is why I have this spread of attributes. Next up, let's talk about the skill trees, starting with the Void Gauntlet. Regardless of what build you are using with your Void Gauntlet, ch chances are pretty high that you're using Petrifying Scream. We're specifically going to be using this skill for this build because it allows you to root your enemy, which sets you up for either some light attacks with your Void Blade or honestly an execute to take him out. Next up, we've got the full Void Blade skills tree right here. Again, this is, allows you to gain some survivability even as a light player as you're dishing off some light attacks and just maxing out overall DPS. I do focus a little bit more on the passives on the Annihilation side because for a majority of these passives, they're helping me dish off fast DPS. On the right side, you have two choices, honestly. Many of you are probably a fan of the Orb of Decay, but for my build, I am using Baleful Tether. It allows you to essentially tether you to your enemy when you are confronting them and chasing them, and it deals weaken, and it also empowers you. As the target's running, you're essentially chasing them, Plus, when you swap to your Great Axe to really chase and finish them off, that tether remains, regardless if you do switch away from your Void Gauntlet, which really helps this build quite a bit. Next up, let's talk about the Great Axe. Now, of course, when it comes to any Assassin or Chase builds, you are going to be using Charge. So this allows you to just dash towards your enemy. It's great for just closing that gap and finishing people off. Next up, we have Reap. Reap is extremely important. It allows you to extend and grab your enemy when they are trying to run away, or if they're just kind of inside of a clump, you can pull them towards you just so you can focus on that single target and really just finish them off. And finally, Execute. Execute deals a ton of damage, and it's just important to understand that this ability does have grit and that it has a 100% critical chance against foes below 30% health. So if you're dealing a lot of damage, you're using your Void Gauntlet um, with the blade, using light attacks, and you're seeing that their HP is getting pretty low, if you swap over to your Great Axe after a quick scream, you can finish them off with a clean execute and just move on to the next target. Lastly, there's one skill that I do pick up on the right side of the tree, which is Mauler's Resolve. This honestly is a get out of jail for free card because if your health gets below half, you gain some quick stamina, which could honestly save you in certain situations with that extra dodge. 
With that being said, let's get into some of the skills and abilities you need to really maximize this build. Now let's talk a little bit more about the actual weapon perks and armor perks you're going to be wanting to focus on for this type of build. What I want to call out first is <clears throat> that I do use the Abyss Great Axe for this situation. When it comes to that final perk, I recommend dropping in Crippling Reap for that final weapon perk just because it will overall increase the amount of slow that that skill does when you are chasing and trying to take down that light target. Next up, when it comes to the actual Voidant Gauntlet, you have a few options. Personally, I am a fan of utilizing Putrefying Scream on the Void Gauntlet as a light build. If you are using a medium or heavy build with the Void Blade perk, I think it's a little bit more useful in those situations compared to light, primarily because that weapon perk focuses, as you, as you can see, on healing for the, a certain amount of damage you deal. It's very, very powerful. Um, however, when it comes to light builds, I'm more so focused on just taking down my target and resetting rather than survivability because I do not plan on being in clumps with this type of build. Next up, when it comes to her jewelry, I have the Corrupt Progenitor Amulet, which is a named item. You can grind this out with, I think, the High Priest in the Merc area. Um, and with the perks, I'm locking in health. Stamina Recovery, which again, this gives me an extra shift dodge in sticky situations, has helped me big time, as well as Refreshing Recovery, which is a somewhat new perk, but extremely useful. There's a long cooldown, but if you're a light assassin, it could honestly save you and give you a few extra skills just to do the job and take out your target. Next up, pretty obvious, the Champion's Ring is probably the by far the best ring you can get and it's not that hard to get just grind out some pvp at xp and this will eventually pop up you have invigorated punishment and hardy locked in and then you can lock in that third perk to anything you want since i'm using the void gauntlet and the abyss it just made the most sense to lock in void damage last but not least over here i'm utilizing the endless thirst earring this allows me to essentially gain empower and fortify which helps my overall DPS and gives me a little bit more of a cushion for when I'm chasing down my target. I personally locked in regenerating, which just gives, again gives me a little bit more of a cushion when I'm taking down that single target with this build. In regards to your actual uh, weapon, I mean armor pieces, you have a few different options. I'm, I'm not saying one way is way better than the other, but personally I was a fan of utilizing health, enchanted ward, and then either elemental aversion or refreshing. Refreshing is definitely useful when it comes to light assassin builds like this because the more you use your abilities, the more DPS you're going to be dealing and the more kills you can actually get. Um, in regards to weapon perks though, if you are not using Crippling Reap on your Abyss Great Axe, then you do want to make sure that you're using it on one of these pieces of armor. Same when it comes to Petrifying Scream and Slowing Tether. This is extremely helpful too because it allows you to inflict another slow, this time not from Crippling Reap, but from your actual Void Gauntlet itself, which honestly is a game changer. You have a few options in regards to which type of artifact you can use, but I highly recommend either using the Featherweight uh, Armor Piece or the Tumbler Feet Wraps. I'm a fan of from the Tumbler Feet Wraps personally, just because again, it gives me a little bit more DPS and that extra cushion from the fortify. But again, you're gonna be seeing all these different perks being used in some gameplay coming up, and it'll just make a lot more sense and why I have this built the way it is. I do wanna call out the importance of the Void Blade in this build. If you take a closer look at the actual skill itself, it calls out that the light and heavy attacks will actually inflict disintegrate, which allows you to deal 5% weapon damage per second, and also reduce the target's armor by 10% up to three times. So if you can sprinkle in three light attacks really quick before swapping over to your great axe for the chase and finishing of your target, you're gonna be seeing an overall increase in overall damage just because you're debuffing them with your void blade. So typically what I tend to do is when I see my target, let's say it's this dummy right here, I activate my void blade as I'm walking up, I tether and then I start dealing some light damage, I'll scream, move over, chances are they're gonna be running now, 
I'll do a reap or so, deal some damage. I'll follow up with a charge if they're outrunning me. And if I can, I'll sprinkle in that execute just for the finish. You'll see that the overall damage I'm dealing is a little bit crazy. And that's just because I'm really stacking up as much void damage as possible because it really does help overall damage for both my Abyss and Void Gauntlet, of course. So with that being said, let's go ahead and just take a closer look of some actual gameplay and some OPRs I've been playing. Now, keep in mind that even though you know the full combo, you're not gonna 100% get it every single time. The more you practice, the better you're gonna get. But as you can see, even though I don't hit the exact combo, I still have the skills and abilities to seal the deal. Plus, with that execute move, you'll definitely have the ability to celebrate over your enemies by using this build. Long story short, this is the ultimate chase build. Plus, utilizing refreshing recovery on your amulet allows these 1v1 chases to be even more effective. As you can see, my health hits below 50%. I get my abilities back even though I miss the reap, and it allows me to seal the deal with that second reap. Plus, the the uh, execute ability is honestly the cherry on top. It's so fun finishing off your enemies. I typically try to use it when they're low on health. Plus, if you line it up, you can actually land double kills, which just really pisses people off. Long story short, this is the ultimate chase assassin build while utilizing the Void Blade. Again, the Great Axe definitely helps you once you're in that chase section of utilizing this build. However, the Void Blade allows you to get a little bit of range as well as just debuffing your enemy quite a bit so you can finish them off with the Great Axe. Thanks again for watching. If you guys liked today's video, be sure to like and subscribe because I have a whole lot more New World content coming soon. I'll go ahead and finish off this with another video clip of just me using this build in a pretty busy OPR situation. But again, I hope you guys enjoyed today's content and stay tuned for a lot more coming soon.